importance of that um, to the Australian logistics industry and the uh, international uh, exports and imports. So um, from a port perspective, um, we have a number of uh, major container ports. Uh, from there, uh, that is um, the Perth uh, Fremantle port. If you head up to the top of Western Australia, that's another port that is actually really not um, doesn't import or export any containers, it's all about iron ore. So if you go over to the other side, um, in Queensland you have uh, the Brisbane port, just up a little bit there, yep, the Brisbane port, and then up further a number of ports that are devoted mainly to the um, export of coal. Um, so moving down, uh, we have the Sydney port um, at Port Botany, uh, Newcastle, just slightly above it, which again is a coal port, not a container port. And then down the uh, bottom there, we have the Port of Melbourne, which is Australia's largest container trade. After listening to the speeches about what's going on in Bhutan and um, other places like that, I'm almost embarrassed to say that that is Australia's largest container port that handles about 2.5 million TEU per year, which is very, very small compared to uh, some of our um, countries to our north. Part of the reason Melbourne is actually such a big container port is because it also handles a lot of the domestic trade from Tasmania um, down the bottom there. So Australia's ports are relatively well spaced, uh, quite far apart, um, still developing uh, still going through some considerable growth. The other interesting thing is that a lot of those ports are now being um, sold or leased um, by the Australian government and the buyers are often institutional or superannuation fund investors, many of whom are based offshore. So there's some considerable uh, foreign investment coming into Australia at this time in the logistics industry, which is very much changing the way the logistics industry even looks at itself. Um, from a rail network perspective, I might just